Tuesday. Welcome to the show. I'm Megan Kelly, and I have to give you a fair warning. I'm a little fired up over Halloween costumes this morning. Have you seen it? I mean, truly, political correctness has gone amok. There are strict rules on what you may and may not wear issued by someone who thinks they're the boss of you. Uh, and joining me now to discuss it uh, is NBC's Jenna Bush Hager and Jacob Soboroff. And a special guest on our panel today, all the way from California, yes. television host Melissa Rippers is here. Nice to see everyone. Nice to see everyone. Nice to have you. So this is, a, this is a different kind of fashion policing, Melissa. Um, Halloween is next week, as you know, right? I mean, this year, the costume police are cracking down like never before. Take a look at what some now say is an offensive costume. You, you may no longer what? dress as a cowboy. That's, that's now offensive. Okay, the student union at Kent University in the UK is pushing to ban this along with several other costumes, saying they cause offense, that they're inappropriate, um, and it goes on to sort of list the things that you, you're, you're not allowed to dress like Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> okay, but let's be honest. Fair you enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like, yeah. what, what seriously? Mean? Like, come on. No, thank you. No. That's creepy. Yeah, but that you, is creepy. I don't want the University of Kent telling me that I can't do it. You can't. <laughs> um, you can't wear anything Mexican-based. No sombrero. No maracas. That's cultural that, and race that, That's more of a spring break thing anyway. Not okay. Um, you <laughs> this are, one left. Obviously, like, I've spring break. you cannot dress as a Native American. That's apparently been some rule uh, for, for a long time. You can't dress as a nun. I mean, it's like, isn't the whole purpose of Halloween to dress up and pretend you are something other than yourself? <laughs> Listen, I was a little about the cowboy because my girls have both been cowboys. They wore the costumes that I wore when I was little living yeah. in yeah. Texas. And this is the thing. Cowboys do dress like that. Yeah. They said they can't dress like that because it's a stereotype. I know some cowboys. That's a real yeah. Yeah. The cowboys. Yeah, I'd be exactly. offended if I dressed like a cowboy. It would be okay for people to be offended because I'd be the nerdiest cowboy of all time. Yeah. But that would be charming. Yeah, but, thank you. But like I spend time in Wyoming and that's how they dress. Yes, but totally. You have to I also come from a family where you're saying you can't dress like a nun. And I remember one year my mom went as a pregnant bride. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, so it's like that, honestly, honest, good for her. Yeah. yeah. I, I just feel like it's so absurd how, uh, who comes up with these rules? Well, and you know what they're saying you can dress at? There's a list of what you can dress oh, as. I don't want to know. Oh, no. Yes. L letters of the alphabet. Oh. oh. You would yes. be a good Letter J. Yes. 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 No, no, I, 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 I said to my team, I said, you know what, Doug and I are going to go together. I'm going to go as F and he can go as U. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mom. They'll figure it out. <laughs> See, and that is like a page out of how I was raised and how I raised my son. Right. So I feel very connected to you with that one. <laughs> right from the beginning, we yeah. were soul sisters, Melissa. I don't know. I feel like, um, you know, there's definitely going to be offense caused on Halloween. Uh, it, by the way, some of 2018's most controversial Halloween costumes are um, the Handmaid's Tale costume. Right. Well, because it's a sexy handmaid. Get yeah. over it. Wear what you want. <laughs> you can't dress as Anne Frank. Which apparently, my, my, I mean, my team was asking, who chooses Anne to Frank as their Anne. Halloween right. And by the way, costume. I want to know what that looks like. I know. Like, like, that's very... It's got, you got the diary, I guess. Um, <laughs> that, I guess that's the Anne Frank costume. I don't... It's like, oh, it's a real costume. But look, free, free, freedom, freedom of expression, it, this is not in our country, but freedom of expression is a beautiful thing. So is freedom of speech. It's part of why I like living in the United States of America. If you're yeah. going to dress like an idiot, act like an idiot, and actually dress and be racist, then somebody should say something to somebody. Yeah. And But you should still be able to dress like a moron. But, well, what, but what, what is racist? Because look, because so truly, you do get in trouble if you are a white person who puts on yes, black face yes. on Halloween, or a black person who puts on white face yes. for Halloween. Like I, that, okay, back when I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as like a character. Yeah, if somebody like, feels like something is offensive to them, then you should say it, and that's fair game. Yeah, and, and you I should be able also, to take it if you're going to dress up like yeah, that. Yeah, you got to be able to take it. Yeah. One of the things they mention is people dressing up like Nazis and this. If you think it's offensive, it probably yeah. is. Yep. yep. And one of my big complaints just about society right now is whatever happened, and I know how you were raised. I don't yeah. know how you were raised, but. That's no, questionable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whatever happened to just manners and polite society? But on Halloween, on no, Halloween saying, you've got guys running around with no, fake axes coming no, out of their what, head. But what I'm saying like you're gonna, is. You're going to be. It's going to be jarring. Right, but what I'm saying is in polite society, one, someone who's raised it would not think. That dressing as a Nazi is okay. Yeah. 
Oh, I don't need the, look. I, I don't need the PC. Or painting police. somebody. I mean, I think that there are limits to how far you want and, to go. But we if you're making know. people feel bad. But, should, but I'm saying normal people kind of know where that line is. Yes, right. I mean, I have a son that dressed as a fireman with an axe and then insisted on carrying the axe around for like a week. <laughs> but you know, you know? There, there was so, controversy on, so the, on the Real Housewives. So, yeah. There was a controversy on the Real Housewives of New York with Luann as she dresses Diana Ross. And she made her skin look darker than it really is. And people said that that was racist. And I don't know. I felt like, who doesn't love Diana Ross? She wants to look like Diana Ross for one day. I, I don't know how, like, that got racist on Halloween. It's not like it, she's walking around I, I have general. not seen it. But you, it sounds you a little have racist to me. Me too. And by the way, I haven't seen the other. But if she really wanted to look like Diana Ross, she should have dressed as Michael Jackson. Because they... <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, I can't keep up with the number of people that I'll fall. Just come on. We're already in the deep end. Literally. Of the pool, I can't keep up with the number of people that we're offending just by being like normal people these yeah. days. Uh, okay. Let's talk about hours. Everybody, we do a post game on the show every day. And I take questions from the audience. And almost every day I get the question, what does your morning schedule look like? And obviously I wake up early, as do you. Yep. Uh, well, it turns out that many problems can apparently be solved just by waking up early. There's an article in New York Magazine's The Cut. Uh, today or yesterday, that explains how just by waking up early around 4 or 5 a.m., you can get so much done. Yes. Even if you don't have a 9 a.m. show, yes. they're saying that, like, that extra two hours... There's some early risers in where, here. Yes, totally. Where no one else is awake, no one wants your time... No one wants to bother you. Like, the, the phone's not going off. What do you think? Well, and when, wait till you have kids. You yes. have to wake Amen. up early. Yes. It's your yeah. only time yes. alone. And even then, they'll find you. <laughs> yes. True. They, by the way. They find you. <laughs> See, now, you have young ones. I have a 17-year-old. Oh, he sleeps late. No, 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 no. Because he now has practice in the morning. Uh, he has a 6 a.m. workout two to three times a week. So now you're sleeping in to avoid him? Well, no, but he comes in, <laughs> knocks on the door, says he's leaving. And now I'm up. Yeah. yeah. I have tiptoe around my house. I'm, I get Me up too. so early. My son's, I think I talked about before, two and a half, almost three years old. I tiptoe around my house. My floors creak so bad. Me I'm going to move yep. just so my son doesn't wake up in the morning. This morning, I'm like, please wake don't wake up. Please yes. don't wake up. But once you have a teenager, just, you can set a bomb off, and they will not <laughs> wake up. Just over the weekend, I, was, I woke up early because I'm kind of on this schedule yeah. now. And I do get a lot done on the weekends, you mm -hmm. know, when I don't have to go to work and I'm still awake. And I decided to watch that movie, What Lies Beneath, with Michelle Pfeiffer and Harrison Ford. Oh. It was on HBO. And then, like, I got distracted, so then I paid the three dollars to rent it. Anyway, there I was, and it's scary. It's a scary movie, you know. And I was so enjoying. It. I was like, there, there with my coffee by myself. What time was this? It was early. early. It was like six in the morning. And then out comes my little five-year-old. And honestly, like, I, I'm in complete love with my five-year-old. But I was a little disappointed to see him. Yeah. I, yeah. I wanted to watch the rest of my movie, which is not delayed. appropriate no, for a five-year-old. It's an amazing movie. Um, okay. Speaking of waking up early, high achievers now coming out and saying the most important thing to, to being successful is a morning routine. So whatever you do, whenever you choose to get up, mm -hmm. you should sort of do the same thing every day. Um, New York Times magazines or New York Times Benjamin Spall interviewed 300 successful people on their morning routines. And here are some common uh, things that they do. Make time for what energizes you, whether it's working out, reading, meditating, spending time with your loved ones, get enough sleep. We know that. Adapt your routine to different situations. So if you work out every day when you're in a, you know, mm -hmm. you go to, you if you're in a hotel, road. you yeah. can do like a little walk around the block, that kind of thing. Um, and don't beat yourself up if you skip the routine. <clears throat> when I wake up, I get my, I get a Keurig. Yeah, right? me too. Easy. Yep, me too. Yep. I sit out there and I do the New York Times crossword puzzle. Every day? That, Every day. In Even pencil. With this new show? Yes. It's, the, it's like wakes up my mind. In pencil or in ink? In pencil, sister. In Good pencil. Question. In pencil with okay. the eraser. Yeah. Good yeah. question. I, only on Mondays would I even try with the pen. Yeah. That's the easiest thing. I do like, well, I give some on the road all the time. I do, I do an exercise routine that probably is not exercise at oh, all. I do like Jane 26 push ups <laughs> and like a Why little 26? Pilates. I don't know. It just like makes me That's feel better number? about myself. <laughs> it doesn't make me look any better. But it does. But, but mentally, it does. It makes you feel good in the morning. We do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. We are on a text, a family text chain, where we read the same meditation, the same devotional. Um, <coughs> and it actually started with just my dad and my sister, and I found out they were doing it without me. Okay. <laughs> and my feelings were hurt. So, I love this. So we read the same devotional, and then there's their text that we send, and we actually send our favorite line from it or our favorite verse, and we illustrate it with emojis. 
Because why not? No, yeah, not. Can, can we know? Can so we, here it is. Can we know what GWB Let's uses see. as an emoji? Right there. I don't. Is that him? He, and the he's Hefe. Oh, it's little, he's Hefe. He's, he's Hefe because he, he goes by Boss for my for my kids because he wanted somebody to still call him Boss. Are you guys? <laughs> so who my, picks the devotional? So we pick the devotional. I actually was on the wrong devotional for about <laughs> three weeks. <It's> just, <laughs> she was living an entirely different yeah, family. That wasn't good for yeah, my morning exactly. routine. It drove me crazy. Exactly. You may have been on my. She was on the Trump family text, and it was basically. Like Trump is God, Trump oh, rules. Yeah. Trump, no, <laughs> my whole my routine is just usually of waking up, getting my coffee, checking my email, laying back down for a minute, and then laying there for as long as humanly possible, <laughs> thinking about how can I, wait that I how can I get out of the trainer? Like I just lay there and be like, <laughs> I can just roll over and text. I don't feel well. Right. I, all I have to do is reach for the phone and write. Totally. Sorry, forgot I had a meeting. It's like I've already paid for it. Exactly. Whether I, use I can it or just not. lay there, just obsessing about like how, wh what's today's excuse, and then I get up and do it.